This is the emergency podcast system. This is not a test. Movies are bombing all over the country. They are posing as movies you already know. They may already be in your theaters, your neighbor's home, or even your own. Do not panic. Specialists have been dispatched. They will help you identify these pretenders and defend you against this invasion of the remake. Please stand by for further instructions. Welcome to the Invasion of the Remake podcast. I am your host, Jason Bishop, and with me today, as always, I need to really find a new intro, because I, <laughs> I, I Same I've time as last week. Same time as last week, same intro as last week, and the week before that, <laughs> and the week before that, and the week before that. But Chris Coughlin, plays- everybody. Hey, everybody. <laughs> and same companion as always as well, Sam Stepanenko. Yeah, you know, we just can't stay away from each other. <laughs> we know it's wrong, but we just can't stay away from each other. I know. Just when that magic happens, you don't want to let it go. Exactly. I want my Sundays back. <laughs> 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 but I love doing this show. Mm. <laughs> so this week, Sam, you picked this one. I did. It just popped what, into my head. It what, just what drove you to do a romantic comedy? You know what? It, like, literally, we were sitting here talking about it last week, and I, what we're going to do, and it literally... Just popped into my head and I spit it out before I realized what I was saying. I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's do it. Um, so yeah, the more you yeah. when you explained it, and I'm like, oh, all right. I, <laughs> we, you know, mm. my thing with romantic comedies. This one's a unique one. It doesn't sit in that regular formula. Mm-mm. Not by any way. Yeah, same time next year, 1978, based on the screenplay. Actually, the play and the screenplay was written by the same guy who wrote the play, Bernard Slade who did a lot of television writing, mm. uh, things like The Partridge Family and The Flying Nun um, oh, back flying in the nun. day, directed by uh, Robert Mulligan, To Kill a Mockingbird was probably his biggest one in mm. uh, 1962, nominated for four Oscars in 1978. No wins. Mm. Oh, well. That's what happens. But, but it was Ellen Burstyn's third Academy Award in, uh, nomination in like five years or six years. Oh, well, yeah. she she almost did the big three. It's too bad she didn't. The only thing we're missing was the Emmy, the, like the, yep. the golden trio, yeah. as it were. Uh, Ellen Burstyn, she, she actually performed the play several times on stage. So she was brought in and so she was no stranger to this material. Mm-hmm. And she won the Tony for that and was up for an Oscar nomination and lost for uh yeah. oh no she was i don't know if she was nominated for this movie or not but she won an oscar the same year for a different movie you no know, yeah. she was nominated for this one yes oh well, yeah okay yeah. so which is pretty cool also starring alan alda who replaced oh yes um was it was it robert redford no no um they were tr- they tried to get him though yes they did try to get him uh, but yeah it was it was somebody big and i can't the, remember it was from the beethoven movies in the Beethoven movies. Oh, I know. Charles Andy's Grodin? In. Grodin, yes. Charles Grodin. He he played uh, the original uh, George Peters on on the stage version. And nice. They, they just felt Charles Grodin wasn't a big enough name at the time. Oh, I'm so glad they changed it because I really don't really like Charles Grodin very much. Yeah. I find him really annoying. It yeah. would be a Although very different I did find George movie. a bit annoying. So. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. Alan Alda, though, who, play, who winds up playing George Peters in the film would have been arguably one of the bigger stars back in the day. Mash was huge. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mash um, was, it would have, Mash would have just been getting going in 1978. I right? think that was like the first or second season. Yeah. yeah. Um, and let's uh, mention this while we were talking about the, the podcast is that we have actually now in the last two weeks covered both actors who have played Hawkeye. Yes. Yeah. Last week we covered the Italian job and Donald Sutherland was the original Hawkeye in the film version of MASH yeah. mm-hmm. that the series was based on. And now we have Alan Alda. Huh. We, we have, have a mashup. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Why am I laughing? That was terrible. <laughs> because sometimes terrible is funny. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and guess what? That was the cast. Yeah. <laughs> this, this movie has seven people in it, five that were credited for minor, like, background characters. Yeah. And, yeah, that's it. I mean, it's it's Alan Alda, Ellen Bernstein, Ivan Bonar, who is Chalmers, the guy who runs the inn mm-hmm. in this movie. Waiter number one, waiter number two, pilot number one, and pilot number two. Yeah. <laughs> 
and, and well, because of the the nature of where it comes from, a play, it's a very studious use of it. Because with the play, you have two actors, you have a, mm-hmm. one set. It makes sense. Yeah, and if, and knowing that it came from a play, you could see how it, how it was adapted by a or a stage writer or adapted from a screen pl- or from from a stage play because mm-hmm. it, it feels like a stage play but doesn't. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, you know, when I was watching this movie, and I mean, the, the script's very clever for the most part. Mm-hmm. I, I really quite like the dialogue and the chemistry between these two actors. But because they're in these smaller segments, I kept thinking, I'm like, this could have been a sitcom. Like, maybe a one-season yeah. sitcom uh, if you did an episode a year. Yeah. Like, this movie takes place over 26 yeah. years, for, uh, spanning from 1951 to 1977. And the general... Yeah gist of this is this accountant goes to this particular inn once a year do the books for his first client yeah do the books for a client and meets this lady who is doris played by ellen bernstein who's still acting today you know she's been going at it for a while she was in the exorcist and she was in interstellar she's still going strong ellen bernstein's uh, quite something yeah. yeah, and she was nominated for another Academy Award fairly recently, within the last three or four years, I think. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, no, she's yeah, like still a powerful actress. Powerful, powerful actress, yes. And so, you know, he's going to this inn once a year, and he's having dinner, sees this lady, and they kind of have a connection. And it turns out they're both married, and yeah. they have this one off. And after that, they wind up meeting every year at the same time. Mm -hmm. over 26 years so we just see this every five or six years there's a jump and we see where they are in their life and they have this beautiful relationship over one day a year yeah essentially one weekend a year yeah so they are they're they're, and they're very much in love with each other yeah but they're Um, also in love with their own family yeah they don't have bad marriages this is the difference Mm -hmm. between this and a lot of other movies where the affair is the escape from the marriage, but in this one, they're not in bad marriages generally. No, and I thought I'd, especially given the subject matter, I'm like, I just, I can't abide a cheater, you know? Like, I, mm. I thought I'd be really angry at this movie, and it really kind of made me check myself a little bit. I, I might have reacted differently, and part of part of why I really kind of got sucked into the movie was how they shot it. They just kept it to that location, we never see their other their families, so we don't quite feel connected. Well, no, I don't think that's a, a, a quite an accurate statement because when they talk about their families, mm-hmm. you do feel a connection to them, having never seen them. Exactly. I but mean, I, I love not the, putting faces to them helps. It does help. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I actually love a little bit where they say, they, they tell they tell each other one bad story and one good story about their spouse. Yeah, yeah. I love that that little bit. I, it just it just added so much to their relationship because they're invested. They're also invested in each other's personal lives yeah right and and making sure that they're, that they're happy in those personal lives and that yeah. plays out um really great later in the film mm. oh yeah it, it totally comes back it totally comes back yeah. and i think the one of the best parts about this film and this is what's going to make it really hard to remake is the way it's not only a reflection of their relationship but the times how how they change and how the times change over the course of this 26 years mm. because the, because the, the, i love the cut scenes between yeah they show meeting. these stills representing kind of the passage of time in those years the flash like politics and celebrities and famous mm-hmm. tv shows and that sort of thing movies. sort of iconic moments in between the two the meetups that they're that they're showing yes yeah yeah so you know you're starting in 51 and McCarthyism and you were yeah. ending in 77 with Star Wars. Yeah. Right? And fashion, we see the fashion changes and everything else. I still think that's very doable in a modern sense. You just count back 26 years from now. Yeah. So. See, time marches on. There's lots of stuff that still happens. Yeah. Yeah. Although that's, what, 2000? No, the 19... It'd be 1991. One. 91. 91, yeah. That's so, yeah, it might work. We'll, yeah, we'll talk about that as, as we get into the remake and sort yeah. of figure out how we do yeah. that. Yeah, um, I might hop it back maybe ten years. I think I'd like to start in the eighties, but that's just me. Yeah, we'll we'll talk that out. Let's, yeah. let's t- talk about the movie a little bit more, and then we can talk talk that out. But I, mm-hmm. I mean, that, that's one of the things that I, that really struck me as I was watching it is like there's so many iconic moments in history during this period from the mm-hmm. from 1951 yeah. to 1977, and on top of that, it's a very different sort of way of interacting with people now 
as well. And I think going back an extra 10 years might not be a bad idea because of mm. that. And the, the, the way people live, right? Because 1951, you had a very oh, yeah. specific dynamic and a very specific idea of family and propriety and morals and so on. Where mm. versus even 1981, that had changed substantially. Oh, yeah. Right. So that's something we need to talk about. But let's go back to the movie and then we'll talk about some more later. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. <laughs> well, so, actually, yeah. let's run the trailer and get everybody caught up. Then we'll talk some more about the movie. Mm-hmm. Doris, don't you understand? No. We're two grown up people. We have absolutely nothing to be ashamed or afraid of. They have been lovers for over 20 years. Yet they have really only been together for as many weekends. Dorothy, in the first place, I want you to know that what happened last night was the most beautiful, wonderful, crazy thing that's ever happened to me. And I'll never forget it. Or you. Doris. They share something special. My name is Doris. Warm. I think I'm in love with you. And meaningful. We had instant report. Did you notice that too? No, but I know we really hit it off. A one-night stand that may go on forever. Wow. Universal presents Ellen Burstyn and Alan Alda in same time next year. Okay, but this is the last time. Happy anniversary, though. Mm. What was that for? For one beautiful weekend every year with no cares, no ties, no responsibilities. Same time next year. It's a story of adultery. Hello? Of crisis. Yes, this is Daddy. Is there anything wrong? Loss. Doris, I'm sorry. <laughs> and pain. About, about everything. Of living. How are you, lover? Learning. And loving. What did you do to yourself? Hey, man, what do you say? Same time next year. It's the hit Broadway play that has charmed, delighted, and moved audiences. We shared things. My God, I, I helped deliver your child. I consider that our finest hour. Didn't Harry like your old nose? Harry thinks this is my old nose. Have we changed much? Oh, sure we have. I grew up with you. Ellen Burstyn and Alan Alda in the same time next year oh isn't that adorable cheating on your wife and husband yeah <laughs> yeah and it's funny because yeah it's it's not your typical romantic comedy and i mean not at all. It, it deals with a very mm-hmm. very sensitive subject of, of adultery mm-hmm. but it's handled really elegantly yeah it is yeah all the way throughout the movie there's these they question their own actions particularly george Oh yeah, he's very neurotic about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, lots of guilt. Yeah, I love, I love how she says, "Are you Jewish?" <laughs> yeah, he's like, "No." <laughs> Are you Italian? <laughs> Catholic guilt, maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just trying to figure it out. Yeah, because I think and it, she's oddly at ease with it for somebody who's there for the weekend to go to a re- religious retreat. But I think that was part of the whole thing. Is like he was very open about like expressing his guilt, but I think. I don't know. That was sort of one of the things that you see her grow as as a because as a woman, she's like, this is just my lot in life. I'm not really supposed to be rocking the boat in any way, shape or form. I think that was sort of what it was. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that she was just taking it all in stride because she did say is like when she was in the bathroom, she spent a lot of time in there. She was screaming with a sponge with a Mm -hmm. towel in her mouth and crying. Mm -hmm. It wasn't what she did. It wasn't what she's supposed to do. She did it privately. Mm -hmm. No. And I mean, when you first sort of find out about her sort of relationship and how her, her husband, Harry was the only man she'd ever been with. And um, the only reason they're married is because she got pregnant. She's, I think, I think this is sort of kind of her act of rebellion. She, cause she, she's, she knows that uh, without this affair, she's never going to experience intimacy with another man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, and in a way, this is her finally experiencing life on her own. And and George is directly responsible for a lot of the changes in her. Even though he only sees her the one weekend, every time they see each other, yeah. something about her has changed and she continues to grow because he continues to challenge her every time he sees her. But mm-hmm. she also... She begins reading and going back to school. But she also initiates changes in him as well. Sure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they, they change each other. And, and usually for the better, not always, oh, but yeah. usually for the better. Mm. And it's it's that in that's that weird they have an intimacy that they don't have with their spouses that in some ways is deeper but also 
shallower. Like they just, they have a different way of having intimacy with each other that sort of helps. Like it's sort of, I think in, in all of our, any relationship you have with somebody, you might be w- involved with somebody, but like your friends or your acquaintances, they do affect you in ways that it's not your partner. But I like this movie, how like they show them growing and changing over the course of these many years. And I think that's part of what makes the movie so engaging is, is you see, you get to see the growth of this relationship and the growth of the two people that are in, in mm-hmm. it. And it's, you know, therapeutic for them in some regards too, with being able to talk to each other about their home lives. With no filters. With no filters. Yeah. yeah. No judgment. Because there's stuff I don't think they, they, they don't feel comfortable telling their spouses a number of things, but this person they can tell them to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because because that revelation is not going to impact them beyond that this week that that weekend, right? Whereas you know some of these the larger revelations that they make to each other are going to have a huge impact on their their home lives. Hmm. They'll be able to get through something without hurting the one that they're with. Yes. Essentially, like they're hurting them, but they're not in a weird way. It, it is very very. It's, it's very, very hard to gray. explain. It. I, and you know. Like I said, after I suggested this movie, I kind of like, oh, I kind of regret suggesting this movie because I'm not sure how everybody's going to feel about it because it is a, a touchy subject. And I mean, I'm watching it and, and, and I am now completely unafraid to tell people that they should see this movie. It's great. I, I, I'm so glad you suggested it. I hadn't seen it before. I hadn't even heard of it before. So, yeah, I hadn't either. And uh, yeah, it was a bit of eye rolling when Sam suggested it. But once I sat and watched it, I'm like, oh, I yeah, I quite enjoy this. But you know, I've always was an Alan Alda fan, and I, mm. it, I'm good with like if, if something's really well written. Yeah, you know, generally romantic comedies seem to follow this weird formula that, and it's just they're all interchangeable. This is not one of those moments. It's so not. And the funny thing is, I had seen this movie before. I've seen it a couple times before, not in recent memory. I, I, the reason I think it popped in my head is, is my wife had been watching it about a month or so ago, and that may have been why it popped into my head. But I saw this. This is, I, I, this is one of my most vivid memories from my childhood. I saw this in the dry, at the drive-in when I was like seven years old or eight years old. Right. So it's uh, so it's one of those those sort of iconic moments in my in, in, in my psyche um, because it's the, my first memory of being at a drive-in. Wow! Right. So yeah, but again, I, I, this what went way way over my head as a child. Obviously, my, my yeah. first drive-in was a double feature with Going Ape and Airplane. Oh, I was ET. Yeah, and I, funny thing is, I don't remember the the, the, the first feature. I'm, I'm guessing it was probably like an, a Disney animated film of some sort, but this is the yeah. one that stuck with me. Because I think they sometimes would have bored me to tears as a kid. Yeah, but I think that's sometimes what they did with like the double features of the drive-ins is you take the kids, put them in their jammies, put them in the car, and the first feature is for the kids, and the second feature is for the adults after the kids are asleep. Mm. Yeah, and that's exactly what it was. And we were in our jammies, and we were in the back seat, and and but for some reason I stayed up and I watched this. I I remember seeing this whole movie, and it's like, and, and there are parts of the movie that, I, that that still are like very vivid in my memory, and I don't know why. Yeah, some movies just get you. Yeah, and yeah, so that, that and like I said, so I guess when it sort of got poked in my subconscious by my wife watching it, it just like I said, blurted it out, and I'm glad it did because yeah, I I enjoyed the rewatch, and, and I'm glad that you guys enjoyed it too. Oh yeah, it's a good movie. Yeah, yeah, I gotta, I I actually can recommend this one. Coming from me, that's saying quite a yeah. bit actually. Well, <laughs> well, I think that's part of what you hate about romantic comedies is that stupid, stupid formula that's been done to death. But this yeah. is a different. One and also addresses like it's a different way of like a love you can have with somebody else like is different. I was pissed off. That guy had a more meaningful relationship out of twenty six dates than I've had in <laughs> in any relationship. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I know this. Is, I, I I think maybe the reason that you like this too is it's, I don't really know that it's a romantic comedy. It's a character study. They just happen yeah. to have romance. Yeah. I mean, because that's what it really is, is it's a character study. Yeah. Yeah. It, it doesn't get too heavy handed with the smalls. No. No. But to no. me, that's, I don't know, to me, that's the romance. Because yeah. they kind of address it. They're like, 26, 27 years, they're still interested in each other. They're still putting the effort in. They're still trying to have this relationship. And that's kind of romantic to make that effort. Yeah. Yeah. They're like the one, one day a year best friends. Yeah. I and you know and I do like that Harry and Helen are also major characters in this movie, even and yet the, you never see them. Or and there's even no the dialogue. Kids. No, and the kids are the kids. the kids are major characters, especially at one point. I don't want to get there yet. I don't. I, no. I almost don't want to even talk about it for those people who want to watch it because it's a heavy moment. Oh. It's probably the heaviest moment in the whole movie. Yeah, and it's so freaking powerful. It's yeah, 
Yeah, I that made me. Yeah, it was a gut punch. Yeah, let's. We, we, I'll just give them the hints on it, and maybe we'll dance around it a little yeah, bit because it yeah. has has yeah. something to do with the in the sixties and the Vietnam War. So, mm-hmm. and, and it's and it it institutes uh, a major change in, in George. George during that time where he's very stiff and serious. And of yeah. course, this is also the sixties, and it's a very major change yeah. for Doris as well. And she's very hipster. Yeah, she's uh, hippie. She, yeah, she's... Hip, oh, yeah, we haven't hit hipster year. No. Hip, just hippie. Yeah. <laughs> the original hipster. Yeah. Yeah, she's, she's gone from being reasonably liberal to being very, very liberal. And it's... it's yeah, it's, done a lot of reading, done a lot of protests. And I love that bit. Yeah. You're not wearing a bra. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I love how it, it... Because it does this whole thing over so many years... You know, in your relationship, there's like different levels of it, and it goes from place A to place B. And it, this is like at one point where it seems like they're the farthest apart they're ever going to be, and it yeah. might even be a breaking point. Yeah, it does feel like it could very much be a last date. Like they just they don't relate with each other at this point in their lives until that in this until position. until this moments of sharing something very personal on Jordy's yeah. part. It's a pretty heavy moment. Yeah. It's like a pretty heavy moment. Their ability to share this intimacy makes a major change yeah. and helps helps him get to a place he needs to be to understand what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's a moment of acceptance for him. Yeah. Like, I mean... He, and release. And release. Yes. And he, it was weird because of, because of the nature of their relationship, he couldn't really get there with any discussions or with his wife. It's yeah. a weird thing. It's a safer well, it's space for they, him to be like this. Yeah, or they share the trauma and um, they're dealing with it differently. And I, I really like George's wife, by the way. Like, oh, she, she sounds, sounds awesome. She sounds like really awesome. Well, and Doris at one point, she's like, I don't think I've ever told you this in all these years, but I love your wife. I love Helen. Yeah. And it's it's Just heartfelt. It. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. She's a she's a jokester and teases George and George deserves to be teased a lot. He's, yeah, he's a, a little, neurotic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a little uptight. Yeah. yeah, and she's not afraid to make an ass of herself. And she, Doris knows like like Helen needs to be that person for him. Yeah, well, and it's funny because like, there's a one bit that I, I mean, like this movie didn't like really make me laugh out loud. It made me chuckle and stuff like that. But there's this one bit where George is talking about where he accidentally walks into the clothes closet. Oh yes. <laughs> And he didn't want to leave. And he, and he, and he yeah. stayed in there thinking people wouldn't notice and then comes out and everybody's standing there staring at him and his wife rescues him by peeing on their host's carpet. Not on purpose, we have to clarify. Because she's laughing so hard. Laughing. laughing so hard, she pees herself. Yeah. And that's just the kind of stories they tell in this movie. Yeah. And, and that's it's what, hard not to fall in love with these people you never see. Yeah, yeah. And th- then that's where Doris gets that wonderful line. It's like, I don't, I've never met your wife, but I just want to tell you that I love Helen. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, near the end of the film, we find out that Helen knows, had, had known for a good 10 years about these... Yeah. That that weekends. George had been these weekends and George had been cheating and this is after Helen's death that George finds out and you get the feeling like well this was something George needed and she yeah. wound up being okay with it because he always came home and he was always a good husband and I think yeah. that every time he came back he came back better yeah yeah right? because they both grow in very positive ways throughout the whole film but mm. George seems sometimes to... it takes a bit of a leap yes yeah. right but yeah it's, it's like. So it seemed to me like, like especially after that the one thing where he's become like super uptight and super right wing conservative guy, I think when he went home, the old George had started to come back. Yeah. Right. And that so I, I think that's and that would have been right about the time where she would have found out as well. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. based on the timelines, I think that's right about around right about, about around the right time. So that maybe sort of she says, Okay, well, I am okay with this because whatever yeah. happened I got my old George back. Yeah, mm-hmm. like I mean, I could, I could see this if he kept going down that path, his marriage to Helen would also have dissolved. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, and he there was a point where he's dealing with impotence at home as well, yeah. and yeah. that's another thing that gets addressed. Yeah, and and well. she that's the other thing with Doris. He'll say something about Helen where he's upset about something, and Doris will just kind of ask him a question about it, like, why does this bother you so much? And I think that sort of thing where she goads him into actually considering what's po- what's bothering him helps his marriage because he's like, oh, yeah, no, it's not about Helen. Yeah, I mean, it's usually his own guilt or whatever. But that that particular weekend, he was like ready to get back on the train. He's oh, like, yeah. okay, let's get this sucker working. And she shows up like eight months pregnant. Mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he's like, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> 
And of course, you know, you know where that goes. Uh, there's a lot yeah. of discussion, and, and then you know her water breaks. <laughs> yeah, and he yeah. helps deliver her baby. Yeah, as evidence in the trailer. Yes, the the fast. <laughs> she, she would she say it was the fastest she's known for fast labor. Well, fast labors. Fourth kid for mm-hmm. her. Yeah. So, so and some women, that's it. Like you're not looking at 36 hours. It's yeah. That baby's coming when it's coming. Yeah. You got to think that's a pretty strong bonding moment when you deliver yeah. your, this woman's baby. And it, it's it's also, it would make it, you know how they talk about their families and they've seen pictures and they do mm. mean they're real. But like at that moment, if he's held her child, that family that she has is real, like real, real. Mm-hmm. That's got to be a big turning point in their relationship. Yeah, And he has more real interactions with her family than she ever does with his. Mm-hmm. Right, because she he, she does he does deliver her baby, mm-hmm. and then later on he does have that conversation with Harry. Yes, which is a beautiful conversation, by the way. I yeah. loved it. Yeah, but then at the end he does the thing he did at the very beginning, yeah. which I loved. He still has that little bit of a cowardly moment, yeah. but where he lies just because he just has to. He feels he must. <laughs> Well, I think he, I, I think that he made that decision because he was all about honesty mm. at that point in his life. Like he was always about have he he'd gone into the sort of that new age phase of his life, and mm. he was all about honesty. But he, I think he realized as well that if he said who he really was, it would yeah. hurt. It would undo Harry. everything he'd just done, mm-hmm. right? So he made a decision to to lie. So there was a, it wasn't True. necessarily cowardice, I mean, partly cowardice, yeah, and partly. That light went on. It's like, well, I just did all this good stuff. Why would I yeah. undo it by saying, oh, by the way, I'm her lover, George? Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. I get you. But I, at the beginning when he starts, mm-hmm. we never told you, like, the first weekend, he's telling her, like, a few lies because he just make, thinks it makes sense. Like, he initially tells her his wife is Phyllis. It's not. It's Helen. Sorry, I lied. Mm-hmm. He initially says he has two kids. And he's like, no, it's three kids. <laughs> I thought it would make me seem less married. <laughs> Yeah. That was one of my favorite lines. Less married. <laughs> it's not. That's not the scoreboard, dude. <laughs> no, but yeah. And that whole first date. He, what did he call her? Something. Dorothy. Dorothy. Yeah. Dorothy. <laughs> and she didn't have the heart to tell him because she didn't yeah. think that's how it would end up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she didn't think it would matter, right? So. Yeah. And then when she does tell him, she's like, eh, well, "You weren't listening." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, that, that that first interaction is, I, I mean, every interaction in this movie is great. Some are very painful, and some are wonderful, uh, and, and some are, are just funny. Yeah. Yeah, and you just you just see the whole run the gamut. And it's like, I like watching people get older on screen. And it's like, you, you think, people like to think, it's like, oh, you, you either don't change, or they want to change, or people change a lot over the course of their and lives. And they handle that beautifully, especially with her. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. But I mean, even with Alan, with Alan Alda, with George's character, I mean, he, he aged, and, and given the limitations of the time, they did a great job with with making them appear older uh, to have aged over the course of those years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I love the line when they're talking. It's near the end, and uh, they figure the old guy who ran the inn when they first got there would have been there where their age was when where they're at now. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, oh, don't say that. He looked really old then. <laughs> Because they'd be in their late fifties, early sixties at this point. Yeah, I figured they were late fifties. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, they would. Well, no, they would have had to be a little bit older. They would have been in early sixties because I mean, his son was his his oldest son was already oh, yeah. close to ten years old. Yeah, yeah they could have. They might have been early sixties. Yeah. yeah, she had three kids when she got there. Yeah, yeah exactly. So. I would have thought they would have. You know, thinking logically, I was thinking when they first meet, they are. 30, 35, like maybe in that yeah. range. Yeah, I was thinking early 30s. Yeah, so yeah, late 50s. Actually, that would put them in late, late 50s then, yeah, probably. I mean, yeah. 51, though, he would have been, he could have even served, mm-hmm. you know, in World War II. Um, I think they make reference to it, don't they? I don't, re- I don't recall. Yeah. No, they do to Harry. Harry was saying that his time in the military was, was the best, was the best of his years life. of his life. That's yeah. right. And she's like, well, a lot of military men feel that way. She says, he spent three years in a Japanese... Um, Japanese pres- internment camp. Internment camp. And he's like, he's like oh. Uh, again, another moment where I kind of laughed out loud. Like, yeah. 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 Poor poor Harry's a bit nebbish. Uh, Dorothy. Or Dorothy. <laughs> Doris's husband. Yeah. Yeah. See, I do it too. See, there you go. <laughs> you keep forgetting your name. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He's a, he's a weird... It's There's a complexity with with Harry. It's like, I don't think he he wanted to be married, but he was just trying to be the best husband he could. Yeah, mm. and he, I, I, he's trying he, to provide. And he's a failed salesman. Because he doesn't he, have the killer instinct. He doesn't have the killer instinct, because, yeah, he was he was uh, what, one year into dental school when, when he got 
Doris pregnant mm-hmm. and had to drop out to support them and he's just not a salesman right? yeah. and every job he has is a sales job yeah I know and looking back on it you're like she goes back to school I'm like well he should have gone back to school and become a dentist because like he probably would have been a really good dentist yeah well Doris does go to school and finishes gets her high school yeah and degree. becomes a very successful business yeah woman. she does yeah her high school and then she goes to Berkeley but yeah like I like the fact she goes to high school oh and she has the symmetry about it she had to quit high school the first time because mm-hmm. she got pregnant and the second time she was on bed rest, so she took a correspondence course to finish high school. Yeah. <laughs> so she only yeah. finished because she got pregnant. Got pregnant. Yeah. yeah. The irony and symmetry of it all. Yeah, no, and it, again, it just goes down to the writing and how beautifully they tie all these things together. And yeah. every, everything, everything in this movie ties to something else. Yeah. Either to their growth or to future events or past events. Yeah. Now, once they start approaching the 70s, talks of marriage start popping up. Initially, it was Doris who proposes, uh, and it was a three-quarter proposal. Yeah, <laughs> but he does say when you're all, when you're 100%, ask again. Yeah, and the next time we flash forward, it's actually, I guess it would have been 77, right near the end, and it's uh-huh. George who proposes. Yeah. Because Helen's passed away. Yeah. But Harry's still alive. Harry's still alive. She's and still married. Yeah, and it just suffered a heart attack. Yeah. Right. And she's like, I just can't, right? Yeah. Right? She's the, and she even says, it's not that I don't want to, I just can't. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Right. And she yeah. thought she thought of it over the years. There's like, there's times they probably both thought of it. Yeah. But it makes you wonder too. That's another part of the movie where you're like, here we have this wonderful thing. Are you absolutely certain if we took this into real life, it would hold together? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they really make you think that last date's going to be the last one. Oh, they do a great job of that, actually. That was oh, so good. He's, I, was gonna, I was crying. <laughs> yeah, he, he's like, oh, I'm not staying. It really depends on your answer. And then he even makes up a whole story that Connie. He's, he's got <laughs> Connie back home. He's like, well, I, I have to be married. I, I I'm not good at being alone. Yeah, I'm not good at being alone. So he talks about Connie, and Connie's the one that had told him that his wife had known about him the affair in the first place so he couldn't continue if he went with connie yeah which is all great makes sense except connie's 87 yeah (laughs) yeah and the whole point behind that is like i thought if somebody else wanted me you that would be good enough and you might think about it exactly (laughs) yeah there's a flaw a, a wonderfully flawed logic there and he yeah. leaves, and then, then he comes back. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. when he confesses that's, that that's that's when Connie. That's he confesses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then he says, I'll come back again and again and again. Yeah, for but, as long as we can, yeah. And it just, at that moment there, I was kind of crying because I thought it was going to end, but at a certain point I came to this horrifying realization, like going, what happens when one of them dies? Does one of them show up and just wait? Oh. Yeah. And they're just alone? And it... They f- it finally dawns on them that they're dead. Oh. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I, I had that moment, too. We can put that in the movie, but I don't want to end the movie that way. No. <laughs> I know. No. I kind of do, because there's, the, there's that That's ending That's a post-credit scene. Yeah. <laughs> Leave everybody feeling good and then fuck, them up for the, fuck up the guys who stayed in the theater. Just looking like, for that end credit scene. Looking for that end credit scene. Oh, you stuck around. This is what you get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like, you think it's all happy after the credits? No. Here's your downer, you keeners. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, Spider-Man's not showing up. <laughs> no. He yeah. did in our last week's episode, but not this week. Yeah, no. that's right. Because <laughs> that realization just broke my heart when I was like, "Oh no!" No, and this movie is heartbreaking in a lot of ways. Like it, it's it, it's not it's not one of those comedies that you walk away feeling like you've laughed for an hour, an hour and a half, two hours. It's one of those movies where you felt the, the entire gamut of emotions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, you watched a lifetime. Yeah. Yeah. Quite literally. Yeah. You watched probably, yeah, you watched a long relationship, a long mm. marriage, essentially. You know, and the, the movie clocks in in about two hours, yeah, it's like right, right bang yeah. on two hours. Yeah. So it's a fairly lengthy one and doesn't feel like it. You're, just so so, you're so invested in it and you're like, oh, it's over. Yeah, I didn't even notice. Yeah. And it, 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 I mean, it is, I think, partly because it is broken up into these logical section of five to six year gaps. Yeah. The only so everything changes and it's like watching another episode, yeah. you know. It's yeah. like binging a show. Yeah. yeah. And I mean I get I get the the point of having the same music in between the segments. That's the only thing that 
graded on me after a while. Yeah, that would be something I would change. Like, I, well, to be honest, update the music for each ep- epic. Yeah, and I'd pull the music back a little bit. I'd make it more in tune with the times, and then uh, you know, I would actually have like not just the clips of the music, but maybe speak political speeches or news announcements, news reports, that sort of thing. It doesn't have to be stills anymore. No, you didn't, didn't have the video. It didn't have to be in the seventies either, yeah. but no. I mean, you could really jazz that up a bit and show the passage of time in a more connective way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The I mean, it's a relatively minor change that would work really well. Yeah. Yeah. I, to be honest, I don't, really need to change a lot i really was thinking well if i would update this and just move it into present day uh, so you jump back 26 years from now we said 91 i'm like well what's happened during that time and maybe you said 80s i'd maybe pull it back just a little further to 85 yeah Uh, that would be perfect because i'm thinking uh, because i'm thinking with like sort of what epic moments yeah. we have in there we have it doesn't have to be strictly 26 years no it can be yeah. whatever time time frame we, we define but i mean when you think yeah, if you go back to about 1985 you have challenger you have 9-11 you have mm-hmm. both uh, you would have to be able to address both gulf war conflicts mm-hmm. yeah um, so there's star a lot. wars well, is gulf war is like five years later sorry? you could do that in the next segment yeah, so yeah. star wars was wrapping up and then we'd mm-hmm. actually see it come back yeah and go away oh, again and yeah. then come back again there's those kind you of could changes. have them discuss the you're, disappointment of you're New talking Star Wars. four presidents oh, from yeah. Reagan Reagan to Trump <laughs> oh. ending on Trump would be quite something <laughs> um, yeah and it's unfortunate that Trump fell fell at the end because he would be perfect for that bit where he goes hard right wing yeah he would have been perfect uh, for that yeah but you know you got the Clinton thing which would be a great the allegory would work. that would work really well against the backdrop of this film. Yeah. yeah. And you could have it they, that's part of a major thing they're addressing and talking about. They're like going, "Well, god." Mhm. Yeah. And so. I mean and if yeah, if we go back to the early to mid 80s then you'd still be able to address sort of the the the, the situation where she, that she's in, where she got married because she got pregnant, kind of thing, it's still, mm-hmm. it, it's still, it's one of those things that it's a lot more likely to happen. Well, you can st- and you can bring it in during the AIDS scare too. So I mean, your dialogue's going to change regardless yeah. because of the times. Yeah. But well, like, oh, I didn't yeah. use a condom, and you know, he still have him being neurotic, but for different, yeah. reasons. different reasons. Yeah. And then then yeah. she could have that thing. Is well, I've only ever been, I've ever been with one guy. It's the guy I married. Yeah. Right? So you yeah. can still segue back into some of the original dialogue again. Yeah. Yeah. True. And then I just, I want to see one segment where Doris is grunge. I just do. <laughs> well, that, that would fit in really well because, we, because we've, we've passed the free love stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so you'd have to t- change that a little bit to reflect the, the, the actual yeah. early 90s, which and, would, would and, fit really nicely. Yeah, 90s was very extreme. Lots mm. of, I mean, you go in different directions, extreme fashion and sports were changing. That's where the extreme sports were kicking in. Yeah. UFC was just starting up. Yeah. And it was all about really expressing yourselves in ways that we can't do now. Yeah. <laughs> and just so a wildness. Yeah. We'd not, you know, it was the opposite of the political correctness that we have right now. Yeah, exactly. And, it's, and that, that whole that whole thing that everybody's become so uptight, mm-hmm. right? And it'd be sort of nice to see them sort of reflecting on that. It's like, what happened? Right? Well, yeah, I don't know if it's like so much so uptight. It's just just more aware. But it's, it, I think the rage in the 90s was more about, it was more anti-establishment from what I remember. Mm-hmm. It wasn't particularly about society itself. But across over into media and stuff yeah. too. It was present in the shows. I mean, you see what... I, I, I watched wrestling in the 90s and, and, Have and the 80s. Uh-huh. So, you know, that kind of cutesy superhero esque kind of wrestlers into the attitude era the G- where they yeah. were crotch chopping and throwing up the finger and. Have the rock. <laughs> so. Things have changed a lot. Not a lot of that you just can't get away with now. So, yeah. and that was present in television and everything else. They were just starting to do NYPD Blue. Yeah, yeah true. That yeah, was the, the, really trying to shake things up. Yeah, the nineties were where, where the limits were being tested. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. They were putting ratings on TV shows and really starting to push the limits. And I think you were getting more. It started in the eighties, but I think the nineties when we were getting more of like the cable channels. That yeah. were able to do the stuff that you couldn't do on regular TV because cable was like a bigger thing. Yeah, well, and you think about it too, the advancements of computers. I mean, home computers in the 80s were 
not much better than calculators, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, just giant calculators. Ooh. We had to do a lot of code and have this sprite that could jump from block to block to well, block. And you could have Doris being like this innocent, because they talk about Doris in the original movie where she didn't even graduate high school, but then mm. she starts this business and just has a head for business. So maybe that's the thing. She just has a head for programming and she didn't even realize well, uh, it. See, I was thinking that we'd make George a programmer. Because in, uh, the, early, in, in the, 80, the early 80s, that would have been like the thing to be in. <laughs> he versus accounting, the right? ET game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. And then cause, because he gets more he gets more successful throughout the movie as, yeah. as, as yeah. right? Oh, yeah. They're both um, loaded by the end of the movie. Yeah. I, but I do kind of want her to have something like that where she has that, that one where she can really, truly profit. Yeah. And I, we'd have to find something that, something, something that would work for that as well for, for sure. Because they, she, they said she opens a store, but I can only. Did they ever say what type of store? No, she opens? she's catering. Catering, that's right. Oh, okay. Yes, which would still be that, that, was, that would that would still, still work. I mean, yeah. the advent of the celebrity chef and all that, you know. Um, yeah, I know. I mean, but you I can mean, still do that. But, but fashion, it, fashion became a huge thing, especially in the nineties. But no, I, I I like Trisha's idea of her sort of moving into a technology type of thing because that yeah. would be perfect. So sort of. Stepping into the they can still have because George's having account. her be a businesswoman, yeah, just kind of comes. It seems like a surprise that ev- she surprised everybody at being good at it. And I'm mm. like, going, I think that would surprise yeah. people that you just a technologically. I mean, part adapt. part of George's neurosis. I mean, his job's kind of it's important but boring. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> with the accountancy, yeah, like keep him as an accountant, but yeah. like with the investments in the hedge funds and all the crazy banking oh, shit that yeah. happened, yeah, yeah, it would totally work in this new block. Yeah, yeah. Where when he becomes super conservative, he can just yeah. be like that douchebag. Yeah, bag when who, people think things don't happen past all that, no, there's a lot of things that happened. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, yes, they got to see the the space race and you know going to the first man on the moon and all that, and we got to see it go away. Yeah, <laughs> you know, wondering what happened to the wonder. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, the closest that, we those got, are conversations you can have. You know, the Mars rover that would be like anything to do with space. Yeah, yeah, and of course, yeah. We, I mean, we have we had more, uh, more more than one shuttle disaster in that time frame. Yeah, yeah. and you have have probably one of the most traumatic moments in American history. Mm-hmm. You have nine eleven. Nine eleven. Yeah. 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 You have war after war that yeah. never goes away. You can, yeah. That's part of that movie. It's part of this movie. Yeah, 9-11, Bin Laden, uh, Gaddafi. Um, Afghanistan. Afghanistan. I mean... Yeah, and 9-11 would happen actually perfectly. Iraq, Syria. Yeah. The 9-11 sec- and Second Gulf War would fall right perfectly into that Oh, that, right that where block. you need the war yeah, to be. Yeah, and I put a tiny yeah. one where I wanted a tiny Y2K thing where they're like, oh my God, is this going to end? Is this our last weekend together? Oh, that together? would be brilliant. That would be wonderful, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You could make it more Again, of a comedy one. great in the middle moment. So, yeah. yeah, it just really comes down to some, again, some clever writing, uh, if you can keep that writing strong. I mean, it all yeah. still works by just changing the scenario. I still wouldn't show the why or the why. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. Oh yeah, change I'm on board of that. Except for, the, yeah. for updating the dialogue to reflect yeah. current times, yeah. and then just change those uh, interstitials a bit between the segments. Yeah. But they're, they're, I still want them to show the passage of time. I would still keep that one location. I mean, yeah. you can maybe change the location to make it more picturesque if you want, but it all works. Yeah, it, it all totally works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a Skype conversation. Yeah. Well, uh, well, that's something. That's something we might have to address as technology starts to catch up to them, where they could feasibly be talking to each other more. But they make sure they have to make. To. A, they, I think they make no, a I meant, decision not to. I meant yeah. with their like the spouse skypes in or calls oh, their phone. That would okay. That would be fun. That's what I meant. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's yeah. not a. Once we, we don't move see into them. smartphone territory, yeah. I guess. Yeah, like yeah. it's it's harder for them to hide the affair. Yeah, and I would <laughs> pulling add, out the GPS out of your phone in the final. <laughs> yeah, exactly no. right. Yeah. No, it would certainly make the make the the, the uh, increase the tension of the of the, the later years of the affair for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I think that you'd have to have a conversation with them, making a conscious decision not to look each other up on the internet. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. We're not. Yeah, so initially ha- they won't have that option. Yeah, but exactly. no. By by the time you hit two thousand, now it becomes a viable option. Yeah. So. Right. Yeah. And I, I I see them both being maybe both of them are like in, kind of in that techno- technological field yeah. too, right? Because mm-hmm. um, that would be a logical projection. Pres- yeah. But I still like him with numbers and investments because yeah. I well, I really I feel that falls with establishment. Work, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's why I was thinking Coda would work really well for him, and that would just add to their dynamic if she 
took what she learned from him as a, as a guy being in the computer field and went, oh, you know what? I see some opportunities here. And she becomes like yeah. a techno genius, like, like fucking Steve Jobs. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Like, she, and she's like had but, like four or five apps that have blown through the room. Yeah. Like she starts off as, as one she of... She created Angry Birds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. She starts off as one of those web millionaires. Yeah. She wanted to do a... Yeah. Make an app for her children, although yeah. her children would probably be adults by that point. By that point, lives. yeah, but yeah, but, like yeah. when she gets older. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, the, 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 the whole dot com era, she, that would be perfect. She'd fall right into that. <gasps> yeah, yeah, that exact time frame. Yeah. So, would she, yeah. Right so she already has the head for business and realizes that from what she's been taking yeah. from, from George, that I was the real Dabster. <laughs> yeah, was just snapping. Er, yeah, if we hit Wait, that in the movie. in the early two thousands, yeah, that's yeah. exactly where she'd find that. Yeah, yeah. So that would work out really well. So she instead of being a a business woman, like a storefront businesswoman, she becomes a dot com. She lady. created MySpace Ooh. and sold it before it went to shit. Yeah. And here's the deal: like, quite frankly, where it's set, where it's like on the the West Coast, she's from San Francisco. Yeah, oh, she's from, actually she's from Oakland. She's it? from Oakland, Oakland, but she's still in California. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it all it all fits perfectly. Yeah, to, no, to, it would, it, this would work really well. And as far as I can tell, everybody's still alive that was involved in this movie. So, yeah. Um, Woo. I mean, you can't have... There's only two people in this movie, but I'd maybe have them in the restaurant when yeah. they're on a date. Yeah. Just have Al- Alan Alda and uh, Ellen, Ellen Burstyn, Burstyn in the background. Yeah, background. having dinner together, yeah. yeah. Ooh, or have them... They're the ones who bought the inn after the old guy died. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's, it'd be wonderful to have them be George and Doris. Yeah. And, and you can even have the one that's had Alex's. Oh, look, that looks like us... 40 years ago. Oh, yeah. They actually can have a line. <gasps> yeah. Unlike, a, unlike the background players in this movie. Yeah. Or uh, or those moments they have in the restaurant where they have them all throughout the film. Yeah. Where she touches them and is like, do you want to go? And they do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there you go. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I suggest that it is, it's There's the original. A lot, they go to the dinner a lot, but never actually have it. Yeah. <laughs> you rarely see... You see them eat... The very first time, and you never see them. Yeah. No, that. They each yeah. really share George's breakfast. Every time they it. go to dinner, it, it's usually code for horny. Yep. <laughs> well, they get to drinks. Oh, wait, and then they we never... weren't hungry at all. <laughs> yeah. They only ever get as far as drinks. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I love the idea of sort of suggesting that they are the original George and Doris, and this is just sort of history repeating itself at the same end. And you could totally do that, yeah. Ooh, that would a... be a nice way to kind of hand that yeah. off. It's a magical inn. Yeah. People adulterize there. Yeah, especially, yeah, especially considering yeah, it would, because this would always this, ours Not is that starting. We're telling people to do this. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> ours is starting like within within less than a decade of of when theirs ended. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe Harry's died and they're together now. You know, although in today's society, I got to think. I'm like, well, it was you'd have the internet blown up. You're glamorizing adultery. Yeah, well, no, that's, that's not what this movie does. No, it does no. not. As a matter of fact, it, it 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 does acknowledge that adultery is wrong. Yeah, in a lot of yeah. in a lot of ways, but they can't help themselves, and, and they're dealing with it the best way they can. Yeah, exactly. And it, maybe there is a point and where they recognize all of those things, and it's the things that they go through, and that's stuff yeah. I probably didn't even consider you know considering the people that may have actually done it and what they might go through and and that's their their friendship like they're they care about each other's spouses and families and they they want that family to still be together and be happy yeah they just want their one weekend yeah and well, it, like you say it helps them it yeah. helps they get through a lot of stuff in each of these weekends yeah. so i think ultimately it does really help yeah it really did make me start questioning some i know of my, my standards a bit and i'm like oh that's how well was, written it is uh, yeah i was really kind of at odds with myself on the on this particular movie i'm like oh well they do have something really beautiful with each other <laughs> yeah but yeah i think when in a remake you have to like i said you have to obviously as we discussed update it you don't want to keep as much of that original dialogue as you can though because it is so well written whoever writes new dialogue is going to have to be very cognizant of how well written that it, the original was in order so to make it work good. yeah there's a few good, good screenwriters out there yeah. that are just really good at that dialogue and a so. good director you need a director yeah. who's really good with that stuff yeah, because mm-hmm. a good director will say no. That dialogue. I need work. some people yeah. to deliver that dialogue too. I, mean, yeah. I don't know. Get the writing team from Gilmore Girls. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> but that's then 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 you'd have the movie in like twenty minutes because they'd have to speak it really fast. Yeah. <laughs> good God, did the show have a lot of dialogue? <laughs> <laughs> I bet you every script for Gilmore Girls is like a ream of paper. <laughs> oh, it's got to be twice as thick as any feature film most of the time. Yeah, that, that show is insanity. 
with the dialogue. It's like, that's why I was drawn to it. I'm just mm-hmm. fascinated. I'm like, how do you do this every week? <laughs> I know. I I thought it was just a really cool auctioneer school. Those those actors earned every penny. <laughs> oh, they did. They totally did. Yeah. And it like to say that much dialogue and have it be understood. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, the, Alan Alda's famous for that for that like filling of very short period of time with a lot of dialogue too like even yeah, as Hawkeye yeah. in, in, in MASH I mean he had a lot of dialogue in that show right? ooh and he's like he's also one of those actors where I remember MASH it's like it. there's a lot of funny moments but there were a lot of times I cried watching he him he is so good oh, at yeah. combining comedy with pathos no, there's a reason why he was on that show for as long. What was it ten seasons or something? It, it was, was longer long. than the actual war. Yeah, yeah the Korean really War was, I think, like six years. Yeah, and Mash was ten. I mean, a lot of actors came and go, but he was really the heart of that show. And if he had left earlier in the, that series, just yeah. wouldn't have been yeah. wouldn't have lasted near as long. Yeah, I think at the end of the series, the only people who were still there were Major Wilhelm. Yeah, Klingon. Yeah. Klingon, Klinger, Klinger. 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 Radar, and Klingon, Klinger. Sorry, and and Hawkeye were the only original no, cast members. Yeah. Radar, Radar. Uh, Radar. No, no, didn't Radar leave? He left he, before. I think he left Did late. He? Yeah, he left. He he left. I think season oh. eight or something like that. Yeah. yeah. I just remember when they had the one colonel who died and they were in surgery and he came in to tell them that he was dead. Oh God, that was such a. Oh, I know, right? It still makes me cry thinking about that one. It's well up. And all you all the, they just stop for a moment, that, but they can't. They got to do surgery. Yeah. Yeah, they just have a take a beat, and that's all they can yeah. allow themselves. Yeah, Colonel Blake. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? To soften the blow, they killed him because the actor was arrogant and felt that he needed to deserve more screen time, so he left. Okay, good. So there's a, so they 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 they're they them sticking their thumb up their nose at him, and going, "Well, you can't come back now." Yeah, wasn't he actually one of the actors from the original film? No, no, the only person in that who was from the original film was Radar. Radar, yeah. was yeah. it? Okay, I, d- I just don't remember the movie. Yeah. Larry Berghoff, yeah, I think Gary is Berghoff, his name. Yeah. Gary right. Berghoff. So casting, you guys want to get into casting on this Sure, thing? it'll be quick. It, yeah, I know it's it'll a be quick. tiny cast. I, I don't even have to look at my phone or my notes this time. <laughs> well, so. for me, for my George, I man, I was tortured about this. The first person I thought of was Ryan Reynolds as George. Problem is... I, I think of Alan Alda and I'm like, well, he's kind of, he, you know, he's nerdy handsome. Like he's, mm-hmm. and I want somebody who could pull off that ner- neurotic thing yeah. and, but still is good with that dialogue. So I'm like, no, I'm sorry. Ryan Reynolds is too handsome. That, and I don't know. I think a lot of the dialogue, I love Ryan Reynolds, but if he did some of this dialogue, it would come off as smug and yeah. smarmy. Yeah. And it would change the tone. And I still might have that, because <laughs> yeah. um, my my George I was through connective tissue through Deadpool is yeah. T.J. Miller, who is oh, also nice. really good with quippy dialogue. And is there's some really, warmth and, there. Yeah, there's some warmth there, and uh, he can certainly pull off the neurosis. Yeah. Yeah. Oh hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, ironically, going back to. Gilmore Girls and that crazy dialogue. Uh, she's right around the right age now. Oh, Alexis yeah. Bledel. Very mm. nice. I, I put her in as Doris. Now, I don't know if these two actors would have chemistry, and that's going to be really important factor. Yeah. yeah. But on paper, it sounds good. <laughs> oh, for sure. yeah, that's what I do most of my cast. We have no idea. Yeah, and mm. for my director, I went with uh, Jason Reitman, who knows how to handle this kind of nice. dialogue. I was thinking... Uh, oh, the Diablo, Diablo Cody movie. Yeah. Oh, directed. Yes. Juno? Juno. Yeah, yeah, very that, heavy dialogue. Again, okay. Sensitive very subject, yeah. Sen- sensitive subject, handled really entertainingly and never feels heavy, mm-hmm. um, except in the moments it needs to be. But it's a very light film with quippy dialogue, and he's perfect for that. Nice. So that that's what I had. Cool. Cameos. I told you where the cameos are. Yeah. So, nice. But that's all it needs. Yeah, yeah. that's really all it needs. Do you want me to go in the middle? Yeah, you go in the middle of the time. Yeah, I'll go in the middle this time. I'll break the break the two of you up. So I was thinking about it, and I'm like, God, who has Alan Alda ish qualities? Because like again, I was struggling, and I went a different way because I this person just popped into my head, and I was like, you know, I kind of like it. I put John Cho as George because I like him. I think, Mm -hmm. and in Harold and Kumar, I watched him do neurotic. He can do it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I've seen him do a few neurotic characters, and I don't know. I just think he's charming. 
And some, I get it. Okay. And then for Doris, this goes back to an, an early conversation we had at another one of our podcasts. Uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead. A lot of bad things happen to her in movies. I want to see a movie <laughs> where she has a hap, kind of sort of a happy ending. <laughs> Remember, oh, she just has terrible luck. That's an interesting dynamic. I, I don't I, yeah. I like that. And then for the director, I went a different way as well, is uh, Sarah Polly. Oh, she, she was on my list of directors, actually. That's a very good choice. She yeah. can do that romance and that really, that heart-wrenching that you need to have at the mm. end. Yeah, that no, is, that's a very good choice. It's, it's funny because, yeah, she was actually on my on my short list of directors. I actually had, like, had a list of directors that I was looking at. Right. Um, yeah. Oh, so, I had a few more, too. Yeah, but so I, I'm going to start with my director because we're talking about that. Because she's so good at character studies and dialogue-driven films. I was Sofia Coppola. Oh, there we nice. go. She was on my list as well. Yeah. Huh. Very nice. We yeah. have a crossover. We have a crossover. Yeah. This is our crossover day. Yeah, it's our crossover day. Yeah. <laughs> she, um, she was on my short list as well. I mean, you can Whenever you look at dialogue-heavy movies, yeah. she's got to mm-hmm. be on that list. Yeah. For my George, um, again, I was looking for the geeky handsome. I went Jason Schwartzman. Oh, okay. Partly because it would make that "Are you Jewish?" line that much funnier. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> And he can do neurotic. He can do neurotic. He can oh, do serious. He can. He's, he's yeah. an extremely competent actor. Yeah, and he's definitely at the right age for and, that now. And uh, he's so funny in Rushmore. Yeah, like, yes. he's funny. He's, and, and he's funny, yeah. Like, he's got the comedic chops. He's done lots of great comedy. If you haven't seen Bored to Death, watch it. Oh, yeah. Because it's funny. And then for my Doris, again, because I was kind of looking for the average pretty and who had somebody who had the, the, the acting chops, I went with Michelle Williams. Oh, yeah. Hmm. So that, that's my cast. Yeah, this is the okay. easy. Well, I'd like to say this was easy casting, but it really wasn't. No, it was hard because yeah. because you you really have to focus on the fact that it's two performances and that's it. Yeah, and not just that. You and these need... were Oscar worthy performances. Oh, yeah. true. But you also need actors where you're like, you know, they're committing adultery. You want, mm-hmm. but you still want people to love you them. You want if you can't have the audience believe in these characters and. Sway forgive them. them and for yeah, and have mm. the audience forgive them for what they're doing. You're sunk. Yeah, you're yeah. absolutely sunk. Exactly, it has to happen like that. Yeah, you so have you... to like these people. That's why the choice is so important. <laughs> mm. I do not envy casting director on this one. No, oh, no, because <laughs> no. like... it would hinge from ABC Movie of the Week <laughs> to an Oscar. You know, it could just be some bad piece of crap that you're going to turn the yeah. channel on to watch hockey yeah. <laughs> and, but it's going to be it's also the writer has to be good to like bring everything together and yeah. still have those themes in there and and the director has to know how to play this so that you again don't hate them because yeah that's part of it too and that's the thing i think i would bring back because he's still around uh, i assume he's got all his faculties i would bring back bernard slay to to update, it. update it. this yeah. um, and maybe alongside somebody who's more a contemporary writer who knows how to handle this dialogue like, like a Diablo Cody. Cody. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and have them work together on this to kind of update it to those those cues. Yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure. I mean, the other thing that you have to consider when doing a remake of like this is this is the type of movie that's getting really popular right now. I mean, you look at things like Hidden Fences and or Hidden mm-hmm. Figures Hidden and figures. Fences. <laughs> I did it too. Uh, it's not just the award show. It just no. keeps happening. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, people are really liking these dramas that are that are really heavily dialogue driven right now. Mm-hmm. So this would be a good time but, to and do it too. Dramas, like yeah. oh, you yeah. know, with very likable characters yeah. and yeah. complex characters. Yes. Like I mean, this isn't just a, a, a shallow thing. You get to really invest and know these people. Their whole lives are on the yeah. screen with yeah. you. There are times where I think Alan Old is. Gets a little too whiny. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, there were times where I wanted to reach out and slap him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's the whole thing. It's sort of, I, I, I wanted to reach out and slap him at that point in the movie. But as it progressed, I'm like, oh, yeah. I get it now. There's I, reasons for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. There's absolutely reasons, but you have to get there. I mean, that that one scene that we, that we we talked about that we're skirting around because we don't want to ruin that scene for people who are watching it because it's powerful. Because oh. we ruin every other movie, might as well save you at least. We'll save one. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, when you get there and and when he's acting, it's like such an asshole. Like he is being quite literally an asshole right up until that reveal, and you're like, oh, oh I get it. Yeah. And then this the the moments after that just become 
that much more engaging and emotionally wrenching. Yeah, it's a hard, it, and that's a hard line to walk. Because you can go too far with that moment with that character. And if you go too far, it's kind of hard to ram in. But if you do it just right, it's amazing. And they did it because, I mean, with that reveal, it's like he literally just blurts it out. Yeah. Right. Right. He's just so full of rage and, and she's, she's pressing him and it just, wow. Yeah. But she's the only one he'll, he'll do that for. She'll press him. But like, I mean, I bet you his wife would press him and he still wouldn't do it. Yeah. It's that nature of that relationship. Yeah. Well, and I think part of it, and I think this kind of, kind of sort of covers sort of their, their dynamic too, is because they only see each other once a year, they notice those changes a lot more than somebody who sees them every day would. Oh, yeah, because right? change is very subtle. Yes, mm. right? Or it can be as, if it's, as it occurs over the course of time, right? Go to, okay, high school reunions. If you go to those, <laughs> look at the people around you. They have changed a lot. For sure. It's true. Yeah, I, I mean... I've known Jay for fucking ever, um, <laughs> um, at least 25 years now, yeah. closer to 30. And I mean, we've known each other all that time, but we don't always notice the changes in each other. Yeah. 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 It's hard. Yeah. You you wouldn't know. Yeah, we'd be closer if we only saw each other once a year. <laughs> yeah. And there was a time there where, where, where there we were. There were times. Yeah. yeah. Where, right. And, but, but you'd notice. There'd be the subtle changes. We, they, they, were, they were very subtle. Jay doesn't change very much and. I mean, he's he's like he's very constant. I mean, he grows, but he's but but he's still <laughs> I'm a constant. In the but universe. he's still very constant. You're the speed of light. <laughs> so yeah, but it, you're right. It, 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 that, that's the point I'm trying to make, yeah. though. Is in most cases, if you only saw somebody once a year or or once every couple of years, yeah. you would notice changes in them a lot more than yeah. if you were around them all the time. I don't think we've mm-hmm. uh, spoken enough about the third most important character in this movie, and that's the in itself. Oh mm-hmm. yes. Which you see minor changes, like it's an older inn. You can see it was probably founded in the forties because lots of antique furniture in there. Yeah, and as time goes on, you'll see like maybe the wallpapers getting torn a little bit yeah. in places, but it's still good. It's just it's not as upkept as maybe it should be. I was doing some reading about it, and it's become a bit of a destination spot. Yes, they, the studio wound up paying to make sure the foundation became permanent. Nice. Um, and I think they wound up splitting it into two units, but yeah, it's a destination spot. So the two units are actually named same time and next year. Nice. Oh, that's so wonderful. And that's the name of the two rooms. It's yeah. a beautiful place. Like when they go out onto it that is. deck and I'm like, I want to stay there. Yeah. And it's an actual place you can go. <laughs> but that, okay. On the list. <laughs> yeah. You can actually go you spend too a night can, in a real movie set. You too can commit adultery on a movie set once a year. <laughs> <laughs> in the same place Alan Alda and, yeah. and uh, Ellen Bernstein did it. For some of us more <laughs> difficult, I'd have to get married first and then go commit <laughs> adultery. It's going to be a problem. Technically, only one of you has to be married. True. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's okay with being the other woman. It's okay. Yeah. But then the dynamic completely changes if we do it that way. It does. Yes. I'm not saying you have to be in the movie. I'm just saying you can have your movie moment. I know, but I want the movie moment. <laughs> because they were damn romantic. I'm not half-assing yes, this. Oh, okay. I see. <laughs> yeah, if you're going to go for the movie moment, go for the movie moment. Yeah. Uh, knowing you as well as I do, you're Al Nolda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I need to find my male Ellen Burstyn. <laughs> oh, oh, the places you'll go. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm just again. Like I said, I was kind of worried about this choice, but I'm really glad that we stuck it out and, and did it because it yeah. is a movie that actually could use an update. Yeah, because mm. it's it's a movie that I didn't know about until you mentioned it watched it i mean i didn't know it was nominated for oscars Mm -hmm. it's just not talked about hell trying to find the trailer to run today was damn near impossible so like it's a forgotten film and that's the perfect kind that a forgotten good film that's something that probably should be needs to be fixed and that's the the kind of film you reintroduce and it's also got that that major point that we like is there's something so there's a part of there's bits of it that are just so good, and you you need to remake that. Just bring it back. Yeah, 
I'm happy that we stuck it out because yeah. I, I was I almost I almost texted Jane and said, "Are you sure you guys want to do this?" Um, but <laughs> oh, like, no. you giving me the out, I would have taken it. I, 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 but I, I, I know it. I wasn't sure too. Like I was looking at the ratings and I'm like, "This is a highly rated film." Like I thought it was going to be another one flew over the cuckoo's nest scenario. And that's part of what I was afraid of too. Is like, well, I, I know that this is a, a, a revered film by those people who know about it, right? Yeah. But I knew that it was it was dated, and I figured it would work. Well, as a remake, unlike One Flew the Cuckoo's Nest, which you could update it, but it would never work as a re- yeah, mm-hmm. well, never recapture that, right? That was also fun for me. <laughs> yeah, yes. well, that's because I mean, you figured out the key to go a completely different way. Yeah, there was no like, no, you can't make a movie this good again as a remake. So why try? <laughs> yeah. And the sad thing is, there's probably some movie executive out there going, "Let's try One Cuckoo's or the Cuckoo's Nest. Let's try it again." Yeah, and there's there's somebody out there who's thinking that they could do it. Oh, I'm sure. But if you're going to go Check with... Check yourself and don't. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, check yourself. But if you're going to go with a movie that is really, like, it, the bones of it are freaking strong and sturdy, mm. and you just want just want to refresh it, give it a little going over. Yeah, this movie really just needs a fresh coat of paint. Oh, yeah. Yep. And I think to make it work, you do have to update it, because, the you know, you think about your movie-going audience is, is uh, 18 to 45 these mm. days, so you got to have to keep it geared to what they know. 51 through 77 just isn't going to work anymore. No, it's really yeah. not. No. No, that's stuff you learn in high school. It's not stuff that that, that, that you can relate to. Yeah. Unlike uh, like 85 to today or, or 1991 even to today would would work yeah. so much better. Yeah. Although, FYI, this is also a good way of looking, like lo- watching this movie, this is a good example of the stuff that's going to stand the test of time. Mm-hmm. And that's these human emotions, these moments, the theme of like how you grow old and like that romance of like that intimacy, what int- intimacy actually is. Those themes are like, those don't age. That's exactly yeah. right. Yes. Everything around it does, but that doesn't. I almost think the secret to a good relationship is not seeing them. <laughs> that's kind of what I thought. Yeah. I'm like, is that the message they're telling me? If that's the case, I'm doing it right. Yeah. Ooh, or maybe that's that. Like that's the other thing. Maybe that's what we just need to do. We don't need to find. We don't need to get married and find other married people. We just have to find somebody we can go bang in an inn once a year, <laughs> and then we'll have the romance of the century. There you go. <laughs> Women these days would be like, shut up and <laughs> quit talking. <laughs> I don't know if they would. I think that's the I whole love, point. I love 60s Doors. She comes yeah. in and she's all hippie dressed and she walks in and what'd she say? Hey, what's, what's, what's Wanna going on? Wanna fuck? Yeah. What's, what's going on? Wanna fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, well, that's really forward. Yeah. <laughs> but again, it's, it's a really great example of the economy at the time. No. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's that's the what makes this movie so strong is you see, you see those changes like the, the that and during that phase or phase of their lives, she's sort of the free spirited liberal, and he's the, this is when he's really in that phase of his life where Most he's a really uptight, uptight, uptight yeah. Republican right winger, yeah. and then the very next phase of their lives, he's become sort of this spiritual free thinker yeah. he's not a hippie yeah. he, but, he, but he's definitely in touch with himself he's yeah, the dad he's m- moved into therapy yeah I kept looking at him and I'm like it's the dad from Family Ties <laughs> yeah that's all I could think of that yeah. whole segment yeah. <laughs> but it, 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 it kind of was and now she's all done up as, as, as a successful businesswoman she's got the perfect yeah. hair and the perfect suit and, yeah. and she's still n- nowhere near as uptight as he was in the previous segment yeah but, but she's really annoyed with all the the shrink philosophies yeah. that yeah. he's spouting, but yeah. it can show you how you can get out of sync. Yeah, yeah, and but the, but then how you find you find your way back to it as well. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, because there's that this is this bit where he where he actually talks to Harry and and basically saves their marriage. Yeah, yeah, and that story is an amazing story. <laughs> Yeah, to to answer the phone and it being the husband. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but when he tells her, he's like, "She told me about this. This is what happened." Then she walked in the door and she saw you. Oh, like, and then what did he say? His name was Father Father o- O'Reilly, O'Reilly or something like that. Yeah. Which I thought was a bit of a nod to Mash, but then I was like, "No, that was Houlihan." Houlihan. And yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, but but yeah, it's one of the one of the again more beautiful moments in the in, in the movie where he's telling. Harry, how his wife really feels about him. Yeah. Yeah. Right, where Harry finally gets the message. Well, and yeah. that's after he finally presses her to find out how she really feels about him. Yeah. And she does bring up this major important point where she's saying is like, 
I love him even if he's not successful. But why can't he love me if I am? And it was frustrating her. And she's like, no, I love him no matter what. But she can only tell him. She couldn't tell Harry. That's the weird part. Like they sort of, there's some communication problems in both marriages. Finding that connection where you can with somebody is pretty rare. So yeah, mm. I guess that's why you go back to an inn once a year every yeah year exactly for 27 years because <laughs> you're like this is rare. We better keep this going. <laughs> yeah, and if nothing else, dear God, I have a family crisis. I need to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> and she's cheaper than uh, a shrink. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and it, well, it, today, I mean, technically, he's getting paid to go there because he's doing the books for somebody, right? Yeah, I'm sure by the end he wasn't anymore. No, no, I don't think he was, because he was talking about how he'll do stuff here and there to get money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, and, and at the end, he's, he's, he's teaching classes at, at, at the community college, right? Yeah. He's, teaching I mean, accounting. Yeah. yeah. Which is kind of cool. I like that idea. But I, I, and I love those moments where, where he makes that realization that, that his, his quest for wealth really wasn't making him happy. I love that moment. It's like, dude, you get it. Yeah. But that's the whole thing. Like, it's, you can't get it until you've been on that journey. Yeah. That's the problem. You can't get to, like, a lot of people want to skip to the end of realizing and figuring stuff out. But unfortunately, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. No. And I love, one of the things I loved about that scene where, where he's sort of made that realization and he's seeing Doris for the first time as that successful businesswoman. And she's on that quest for wealth, right? Yeah. Like that's that's mm-hmm. interesting contradiction there. Because she's always kind of struggled because Harry's not good at getting work. Or not good at keeping jobs because she's not a good salesman. And now she's finding that point where she's able to provide for the better things for her family and for herself. And George has gone the complete opposite, opposite direction. It's like, we don't need much. Yeah. right? The kids are gone. We have a little house. Mm-hmm. right? I do odd jobs. I'm happy. For the first time in my life, I'm truly happy. Yeah. yeah. And he's got money. so yeah. yeah, like he would have had some money, but he's like, no, if we need a little bit more, like I'll do something. But yeah, you're right. Like it's sort of, she's forgotten sort of forgotten that previous experience and then yeah. they're doing it because you get caught up in stuff yeah and, and we i think, see her let go as well yeah but you mean that's but you sort of maybe that's part of the other part of this is that relationship helps them see maybe when they're getting caught up in something yeah because this this whole in is like the fulcrum of their relationship they return to this spot and sort of reset in a way mm-hmm. every year yeah yeah you're totally right about that I wouldn't, you know, the one thing I, I, I missed, I'm like, well, what happened in those other years that we don't see? That would have been interesting if it popped into a piece of dialogue. And like, oh, what, yeah. what if what if the pregnancy year is the year we didn't see? And they just said, well, I helped deliver your baby. I'm like, wait, what? What's yeah. that story? You know? <laughs> I know. <laughs> and just leave it hanging on the audience. That's oh. awesome. I love that. <laughs> so I would love them to just drop something from a year that... You don't that see, we don't yeah. see, and it yeah. just sounds incredible, and we don't get to see it because it's just a yeah no, nope you don't get it sorry yeah something <laughs> incredible yeah have something incredible there or like Mess also with the audience a bit also have incredible stuff so like where maybe one of their marriages almost ends but they yeah. talk about oh no we we did this and now every, we're fine now yeah and yeah. I think that'd be a, that would be a good ad actually because I like I can kind of have in my head as this as, as like a remake slash sequel now that we've talked about having Alan Alda and Ellen Burstyn. Yeah. In there as the original couple kind of thing. Well, we call we like to call those stealth remakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah. So that it's it has that. that so so you ha- you'd have those subtle changes where maybe that pregnant the pregnancy isn't a thing in, in in our remake, but the the almost divorce is. Yeah, right? I mean, if you can come up with a clever enough script, you could use those years that you don't see as nods to the old film, yeah. and mm. mention that. But you'd have to watch the old film to get those references. I like, yeah, that's good. I like that. Yeah, yeah. And, and so that's, you come up yeah. with completely new scenarios. Yeah, or en- enough of them, right? Enough but, of them. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think their song should be? I like, if I'd known you were coming, I was going to bake I, a cake, and I'm like, yeah. I, I'm wondering. Sam and I were talking about that, and I think the song should be different between each segment to be more more of the time. Oh, no, but I mean, like, isn't that, that I Bake a Cake thing, that's just their first oh, song. Their yeah. first song, that was a song that was playing while they're making <laughs> love, and that's yeah. their song. You. <laughs> Baby Got Back. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think of stuff that would have been around out and around 1985. The Humpty Dance. Like butts. See that one popped oh, yeah, in <laughs> yeah. Hungry like the wolf. Yeah. Nice. 
Yeah, but something like that's kind of got that weird irreverence, like like if I'd known you were coming, I would I would I'd, I would have baked a cake. Ooh, Axel Foley, like is eighty five Beverly Hills Copper? Is that earlier? It's a wee bit early. Oh, do 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 do, <laughs> and he could just play it on the piano. <laughs> that would be funny, actually. That would be funny. I like that was great because when she's pregnant, and yes. to, to kind of wear himself down and blow off some steam, he was playing the piano, and he's really good. Yeah, like really good. <laughs> That's right. That's how he makes money. Is he plays he, he plays piano in some of the local bars. Yeah, yeah. And I, I love where she's. Once they have the lines like, "Are you as good as I think you are? How good do you think I am? I think you're spectacular. I'm not as good as that." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they, just the, so, so those some of those just those moments are are, are what, like perfect comedy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this movie. Yeah, you're the gamut of emotions. I was happy. I was sad. I was giggling. I was like, oh. <laughs> it's just such a rich movie yeah, yeah totally worth a remake yeah that piano scene is like we've been coming here for years and you've never played that piano <laughs> well they we're busy doing other things yeah. <laughs> yeah i didn't need to release my stress <laughs> well and she addresses that too she's like well okay I, usually what happens is i come here and like we get hot and heavy can't do that i don't know how to break the ice might as well tell the story game and then by the end, I think she's figured out she can at least rub him off. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's there's ways around. <laughs> there are definitely ways around it. Well, I guess that never wound up happening yeah, since she wound up giving birth. But <laughs> No. But I like how that is actually the thing. Like, even with that one weekend where they don't make love once. Yeah. It's still... Still meaningful. Yeah. Yeah. Because the, I, I, the relationship isn't about the physical intimacy. They they enjoy it, but it is really about the conversations they have. It was the conversations they were having that led them into bed in the first place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So their relationship is based on conversation and, and actual interaction with each other. The the physical part part of it is only a small portion. Well, you get of it. The like feeling a real relationship. Was, you get the feeling that mm-hmm. first one was uh, a lot of conversation and drink because he wakes up and he's like, "Oh no!" Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> like. Uh oh, he. Where did this come from? Oh no, oh no, he's freaking out, and he's like, "How do I get out of here?" Wait a minute, it's my room. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's what was it? One twenty-two p. One twenty-two a.m. And he knows because his watch said four forty-seven because it's always three hours and twenty-five minutes. <laughs> I love that. That was awesome. <laughs> uh, this is funny how you get used to things like. I had a watch like that. Not that out of sync, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's weird. I don't... It's not that exact same thing, but I used to have a watch where I'd always set it a bit ahead, thinking I was fooling myself, but then getting so used to it, I wasn't fooling myself at all. I was like, oh, I know that's 25 minutes fast, and then still being late. <laughs> See, I used to use the one in my car to trick my wife into thinking that she had less time than she does. Ah. Because I know it's only like three or four minutes, but it was enough. She's getting the car like, oh my gosh, you better get going. We're, we're, we're late. And I'm like, oh no, we've got lots, lots of time. We've got an extra five minutes. You don't, <laughs> you're not supposed to tell her that. Oh, I don't do it anymore. She figured <laughs> no. it out. I was smarter than that. I used to do that with some of my cousins because they were notoriously late. So I'd tell them, oh, we'll meet at four, four o'clock. And <laughs> I would show up at 430 and still be there first. Text time. Text time, yeah. Sam and I yeah. have a friend, uh, Tex. Hey, Tex. If you're listening to the show, shout out. Hey. <laughs> um, we would we would give everybody time, like if we were having a party or something, we'd tell everybody the actual time, and then text time would be three hours earlier. Nice. <laughs> and we're not getting three hours earlier, and you'd yeah. still be late. Yeah, oh, wow. Still be late. My cousins weren't that bad. It was an hour at most. But at least he'd be closer to on time. Wow. So I don't I don't know maybe he just wasn't late he's just living in the wrong time zone. No, you know, to be <laughs> he honest, needs to be in the Pacific Tex, Ocean. Tex wasn't late because of Tex. Tex was late because he had this. He's a good guy and would wait for everybody he, to show up to make and, sure that everybody got was able to get to and from places safely. Yeah, uh, right? and and they were the ones always late. They were the ones always late, yeah. and he wouldn't oh, leave no. until everybody that said was he's going was going to be there was was, was, was there, there so yeah. that he could then make sure they got shuttled to and from yeah. the event safely. So if it wasn't an event that Sam and I were hosting, we'd be like, okay, we'll see you there. Yeah. Because <laughs> I just wouldn't want to get sucked into the, the black hole of waiting. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. And, and yeah, the pre-drinking would get out of hand. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. The party would start over there and they'd be super cut by the time they got there. So 
like, yeah, I'll wait for you. <laughs> See, what, at what point does pre-drinking become party number one? <laughs> and then the next party is just party number two. Well, that was lifestyle then. Yeah. <laughs> I know. But I think, isn't there like a tipping point? I've always wondered. <laughs> Everybody goes through that in their 20s. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you go to the bar and you'd, you'd be like, no, we have to drink before we go to the bar because we go to the bar. It's expensive. So, yeah, that way you can only have two or three drinks instead of like 10 and save a little bit of money. Yeah. yeah. And that's exactly. that's the whole, that, that's what pre-drinking is. It's, it's also party number one. I think they're synonymous. Yeah. But pre-drinking is drinking your affordable liquor so you have a nice buzz when you get to the bar so that you drink less, theoretically. But in my experience, that once you work. get that drunk, you forget how much you've been drinking and you tend to drink more anyhow. Yeah. Yes, it's weird. I, that's has there's been a lot of blowback on that one, <laughs> and still, still we tried. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm I'm an adult now. Now it's I'll go to the bar, I'll have my one or two drinks, and I'm done. You're old. I'm old. <laughs> We've gotten grown up. We grew up. That sucks. Yeah, no, I only get drunk at home when my friends come over. Nice. Sorry. <laughs> Why not? No, don't apologize to me. Apologize to my wife. <laughs> I usually bring the booze. <laughs> yeah, but ironically, she was the one hungover. It, yes. The first time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's funny how that works. <laughs> it gets the hangover without the drinking. <laughs> you just secretly transfer it in the middle of the night. We know that. You have a ray. <laughs> it's, it's a special gift, yeah. <laughs> secretly pouring booze down her throat while she's sleeping. <laughs> You could drown someone that way. <laughs> oh, never said I'm it not, was easy. I'm not, I'm not sharing my secret. Nobody thinks really it's going to be doing it to their spouse. <laughs> this took a... Two okay. blood transfusion. <laughs> wow. Things got weird, guys. Things got real weird. <laughs> he just keeps saying they're aliens. <laughs> no, I don't really do that. <laughs> Well, you know, when things get weird, then Jay rattles off the the social media shit. (laughs) (laughs) So if you dig the show, like it, share it. I can't reiterate enough. We love that you like our posts and and, uh, heart them on Twitter and whatnot. But retweeting them and sharing them on your walls also helps us out a lot, too. It shares the show and introduces it to new people. So... Mm -hmm. Please do us that solid. Uh, you can also leave us a review and a five star rating over on iTunes. Mm-hmm. And that again helps people find the show and helps us move up on the charts. The more people are listening, the the more we move up, and the more people find us, and so on and so on and so on. So help us out there, and you know we give you an hour and a half to two hours of goodness. Commercial so, free entertainment. Commercial free entertainment, except for this bit. <laughs> well, this is a commercial for us, so yeah, it's really. not like it's a paid commercial. Yeah. <laughs> Another way you can help out this show is just tell your friends who aren't listening about the show. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play Music, Audio Boom, Player FM, TuneIn Radio, Blueberry, and even YouTube. Yep. Even YouTube. So. All those ways, uh, you can also leave comments, corrections, suggestions about, uh, we'll yeah. take your suggestions, we do fan challenges. You can leave all that stuff over in various places, at Invasion Remake on Twitter, Invasion of the Remake on Facebook, and Invasion of the Remake at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. Don't let us be your secret once a week affair. That's right. Tell, tell everybody that you're seeing us. <laughs> if nothing else, same time next week. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> so true, though. It is. It is. Uh, if, if that's the case, I'm sleeping with a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> there you, the you, entire internet is... is your bedmate? Affair. Remember, Jason, you're podcasting with everyone else they've podcasted with. <laughs> <laughs> I protect myself. <laughs> I have a good password. <laughs> It's a very strong password. <laughs> <laughs> and it's latex free. <laughs> and now we're moving into Rain Man territory. How's that possible? <laughs> it's very good. It's very good. Good, yeah. It's a password so good and not so unnoticeable you can barely feel it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the biggest password ever. <laughs> That's what Trump says. It's a really big password. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. We're going to make the Mexicans pay for it's it. It's a super bigly password. <laughs> it's bigly. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my goodness, that was so much fun. <laughs> All right, we're getting loony again. So I've been Jason. I'm always Sam. I will continue to be Trish. We're out of here.